Nothing happens for no reason. Everything happens for some reason. Why do you watch bad anime? There's always some kind of incentive behind why we do anything. It's never for no reason. So, if you're watching bad anime, there must be some core reason. Why are you watching anime at all? Most of us consume art as a way to connect with other people, but that can mean a lot of different things. Some people like to connect with others over a show. I like to connect with others through a show, and this is a huge difference. A lot of people want to feel like they are a part of something, a part of a community, a part of an identity, a part of an idea. You want to say, I am an anime fan and I fit in with other anime fans. I go to the convention to speak to the other fans, to connect over the thing we all like. I go on Reddit to discuss the thing, to participate in it. That's the only reason you would feel the need to watch shows weekly other than just simply that you need something to do once a week and this show happens to fit into your schedule well, the main reason that most people watch weekly is so that they can participate in the conversation, to be a part of something. And when your goal is to be a part of something, to connect with others via anime, by way of anime, um, you don't necessarily need it to be good. You just need it to be something you can have a conversation about. And it's okay to like things even if it's just for that reason. This was inspired by a comment someone left on the Reddit discussion of my Steins Gate Zero video where this person kind of blew my mind by saying that they they can't stand these types of analytical videos because it makes them like anime less. This person was like, I just want to be able to enjoy these shows, but when I watch videos like this, it might ruin the show for me, and I become increasingly incapable of enjoying other shows. It just makes anime worse for me. And that was fascinating to me, because for me, those anime are already bad. There is no making it worse. It's not as though this is something I turned on one day and now anime is just worse for me. Anime was always this bad. The only reason I love anime is because I go out of my way to find the good stuff and there is always good stuff. Always. There always has been, there always will be because creativity doesn't just die. It doesn't simply shrivel up. People need to get the things that they're inspired to get off of their chest, off of their chest. There are people out there who just compulsively have to create. And most of them are going to create in a medium which they understand because it helped to inspire them. It helped to give them the words to express what they were feeling. The reason I appreciate anime specifically so much is that so many of the people who have created anime seem to feel so similarly to how I do and to have expressed their feelings in a way that uniquely clicks with my mind and therefore I go forth and try to create something that is in that image in some way. And I might not create anime, but a lot of what I create has the personality, the mindset of the otaku which is a common trope throughout anime, representative of the type of people who connect to others through the medium. Hence why I love shows like Shirobako so much that are about this sort of Ouroboros of connection. So, what I connect with is not my fellow anime fan. I don't connect with other people who like this thing. I don't connect with the community of watching it weekly and discussing it. I connect with the creators of it. I connect with the people who make the shows. I feel something because they felt something and they communicated what they felt to me. And this is why I am so uniquely offended by cynical cash grab media, by media that exists to utilize someone's vision in order to make money. And I understand and appreciate why it has to happen because there's just not enough people 
who care about the media in the way that I do to perpetuate that media's existence. However, my camera's about to run out of space. Point being, thinking critically about anime has never made me less able to enjoy it because I was always doing it in the first place. The only way I'm going to enjoy a show is by feeling that sense of personal connection, feeling connected to the creator. I don't really get joy out of talking to other people about anime because most of the time they have interpreted something different out of it or they just don't feel that same connection that I do. And it's not even to say that my interpretations are better or more correct, though I do feel that like I've always connected with creators more as a creator. And a lot of the people who make up my core audience, the people who are, you know, who talk to me a lot on, on Patreon, the people who support me heavily throughout the years are creators. They're other people who have tried to make their own art their own media and the reason that they like my stuff is because I speak to them as creators I sort of connect their mind to the mind of the the you know people who make the stuff that they love and help them to understand those people better so they can understand themselves better so that they can create better and that is the kind of shit that the people who send me letters about how much they like my shit talk about so you know I guess I would say that's what I pride myself on, is that ability. I understand why there are people who want to make business out of art, because creating art can just be fun, and it's all a matter of perspective. I think there's a lot of people who just fear the idea of the office job, who fear the idea of living the, the normie lifestyle so much that if they can commodify art it's just sexier it's just more fun especially if you can be famous if you can have people listen to you then there's an element of power involved as well where your opinion holds sway and your personality holds sway and it's just there's a lot of nuanced feelings you can get from having that as your career as opposed to something else and you have to work you know really hard to make money doing art so it's not like you're necessarily being lazy it's just that that kind of modus operandi, to me, doesn't really get to the heart of why art is created or why it resonates with people. Now, granted, because of the fact that most people aren't creatives and do mostly consume art for more shallow levels of connection, it is a, a self-perpetuating engine. There are people who create shallow art, there are people who consume shallow art, those are both the majorities, and therefore, that machine can just keep running. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with liking things that are bad, in my opinion, in the way I look at the world. But I exist to point out that difference between what I see as bad or cynical or, you know, cash-oriented media versus stuff that... I see as inspired or coming from the heart or that I feel a personal connection with and I create that content for the kinds of people who feel like me. It is an attempt to connect in the same way I connect to the media I like. I want to feel human connection with others and I have felt it through watching stuff. I'll watch a show that I truly love and I feel like, wow, I connected with this so strongly. but. How do I find other people who connected with it as well? And I won't get that just by talking to any random person, even who likes the same thing, about the thing. I have to create something that, you know, that's, that shows that understanding, that, that bridges that gap, that makes it clear what I got out of it and what I'm now putting forward to you. Now, personally, I think that... I do this a lot of the time out of fear because I am afraid of creating stuff that is just my own psychic mind blasts, you know, my own like characterization of my own psyche, of my own thoughts to create my own media, not only because it's harder in a financial sense, it's harder to make a career out of it. It's way easier to piggyback on someone else's creation and to do something that takes a tenth of the work but makes ten times the money 
as what an individual person working on that thing might have done. So not only is there a financial incentive to do things the way that I do it, but also it's just easier from an emotional standpoint because instead of me trying to find a way to make those thoughts into something that you'll care about, I can take something you already care about and translate those thoughts and feelings out of it and make it just a little bit easier. And I do think there's a value in doing that because of the fact that there are people who find strength in having words for the ways that they feel. And art is not always a lingual medium, especially not anime. I mean, fucking most of it's visual. It is primarily visual and you get that that visual communication and for some people having words to give to why the animation is able to create those feelings gives them a greater understanding of their own feelings and a better ability to produce art that then um you know that then conveys those feelings so yes i do think there there's a purpose to being this kind of stopgap of uh of creativity but is it the maximum potential of my own creativity? I would not say so. I would say that I could put myself out there and try to make something that encapsulates my mind in a deeper, more complete way without piggybacking on other people who, yes, I may relate to, but they're not me. You know, nothing I've consumed is anything close to something I would actually create uh, other than, you know, analysis of of it itself because that's it's a good limiting parameter it's a lot easier than looking at a blank canvas and saying spit out whatever random part of my mind it's easier to just sequester the part of me that connects with this piece of media and then focus on that now let's talk about the art world as it stands Internet media has reached kind of a dead end right now, and it doesn't have to stay that way, not even for long. We can do something about it. But creating art on the internet is a bad sphere at the moment because everyone's trying to do it for social media. We're all trying to create for existing platforms because everyone is on existing platforms and there are payment structures built into them, i.e., once again, it is easier. It's a lot easier to promote your work on social media. However, it's only easier if you create work that fits into the paradigm of what is successful on social media. You can't just do whatever you want. Now, you can do whatever you want and then try your hardest to make it look like you didn't. You could try your hardest to pretend that you created something for whatever social media platform you're trying to reach and, you know, play sort of mind games with the audience to try to make it appear. For instance, going on YouTube and using a, a, a clickbaity title for something more complicated, like uh, this video where I called it Why You Like Bad Anime, and now I'm going on to an entirely different rant about why YouTube is dead and we need to fucking come up with new paradigms for creating art. But this isn't really sustainable and everybody knows what we're doing. It's, it's cynical in itself and it's unnecessary. We're all just playing by the rules that are already there when we can just go make our own rules. Now for a long time, people have been saying, but how? How? Especially in the realm of internet video, because internet video has been so difficult to host. And the internet in general, up until this point, what I will refer to as Web 2.0, which is what we've all been on, um, has had the problem of it costs. It costs money for things to exist online. You can't just upload, you can't just create a video, have it on your computer, and have other people access it en masse because you don't have the, the, the bandwidth to support that many people. It costs a lot of money. This is why something like YouTube, which has just seemingly infinite server space and bandwidth affordability, can just stream an infinite amount of video at all times. And there was no other platform that could do that. For me personally, as somebody who puts out constant content and a lot of it long, there just was no video site that could host my shit at the volume I was posting it. Most sites have 
some kind of limitation on your uploads. Uh, not the case anymore. And it used to, I mean, there was always ways around it, right? Like, I could have released all of my videos as torrents, and they could have gotten passed away around that way, but there's not the ease of just going to YouTube and just clicking a video and watching it, and that ease is such a huge part of how social media has taken over. It just made everything quick and easy in a very easy way to get as much fucking content as is necessary to fill your day, and why even look beyond that? Well... The answer is there's nothing fucking there anymore. The answer is that because it's been like this for so long and it's put such a stranglehold on creators and it's killed innovation and creativity and made it so difficult for anybody to do anything new, people eventually get sick of it. Nobody wants to do it if it's just like doing a desk job, you know, except for the people who, as I said before, were approaching it more as... This is, this is a desk job, but it's one where I get to be famous and do cool, fun things and potentially make a lot of money if I take a lot of brand deals and endorsements, you know, for, for work that is no more complex or requires any more thought than regular desk job work. Uh, but if you're somebody who's in here because you actually want to do something creative, it is stifling to be a part of social media because you have slowly corrupted your vision until it barely resembles itself anymore. And as a result, more and more creative people are leaving these platforms and giving up. They're just saying, fuck it, I hang up my hat, I don't want to participate in this system as it stands. And they shouldn't have to. And they don't anymore because it is now as simple as YouTube to do peer-to-peer. We have now sites like BitChute. I posted a 16 gig, six hour video on BitChute for my patrons that is uploaded via peer to peer. And what's great about peer to peer, for anybody who doesn't understand why it's, why it's important and why I'm bringing it up, um, the way the internet is now, as I said, uh, the more people view your thing, the more costly it is, the more space it takes up. With peer to peer, it is literally the opposite. The more people view your thing, the more people are hosting your thing, and eventually, if you have enough people look at it, it costs nothing for anybody for this thing to exist. So through peer-to-peer -peer networks, we can eliminate the necessity of giant corporations holding the reins of the internet. Because as it stands, a site like YouTube can only exist because of Google and their insane advertising dollars. And Google is constantly going to chop off all the limbs of the service that they don't like. They're going to constantly fuck over the artists. They're going to constantly coteau to the big companies because they need the money to run YouTube. However, some other site that uses peer-to-peer, -peer, as long as peop enough people are using the site, then it can sustain itself. There is an entirely new internet. Right now we're all using HTTP in our browsers. There's a new thing called DAT. You can get a browser called Beaker that runs on DAT and it's all peer-to-peer -peer website hosting. When you download the Beaker browser it literally tells you make a website right away. So you can just make one and then because you have it now other people can access it from your computer and yes even if your computer's off I don't know how they just introduced a feature where even if your computer's off, it still still works. Um, and then other people, you know, once they've all got it, then it's, it's just kind of there now. It's now a thing that exists. So this is what can be. We can just leave. The means are there. Internet video can survive through peer-to-peer -peer and still be instantly watchable just as easily as it is on YouTube. You can leave the major platforms that have been holding everything up for the last five years, the question is, why would you? Because as a creator, the answer should be obvious. You can do whatever you want on these platforms. There's no rules there. If there's no Emperor Google holding the reins telling you what you can and can't upload because it's all peer-to-peer, -peer, I mean, you'd have to get individually sued by a company who didn't want you to do whatever you were doing for them to shut you down. And that's not likely going to happen unless you are literally just uploading copyrighted content all the time. So, 
you know, you you are in a more powerful position as a creator. There is no algorithm you have to try to appease. There is no set style that is the most popular. You can go and be a frontiersman on a new open web 3.0 at your discretion. However, the trade-off is you don't have the built-in algorithm. You don't have the easy audience. But guess what? You don't have that stuff anyway unless you are going to be the corporate creator. Those are the only people who can be successful on YouTube now because YouTube is entirely built around promoting that type of content. And it should be. It only makes sense because YouTube has no incentive to take care of smaller YouTubers. Casey Neistat gets more views on the videos he puts out in a week than I have in my entire career. There's no reason for them to care about a channel like me with 350k subscribers when they have this small stable of cash cows who they're in close contact with, who they can work with directly and curb the style and feel of the website in the direction they want it to go and corporatize it and make it mainstream and make it normie and make it so it's accessible to everyone but has nothing to do with what it used to be, which is anybody doing whatever they want. That era is long over. So the time is now that if you want to do whatever you want as a creator, you have to leave. You can't find it here. Yes, you can work your ass off all the time, treat it like a desk job, get the big bucks, but you will never have time for your vision. You will never have time to be creative because you don't get to stop. It's not like you reach a million subscribers and then you can just change your whole style and do whatever you want because you're just going to lose the subscribers. You're just going to lose the algorithmic help when you're not posting a video three times a week, when you're not posting content that plays well with the algorithms, when you have a title that isn't catchy, when you are talking about a subject matter people don't care about, you're not magically going to get more views just because you raised your sub count, as evidenced by any fucking evidence on the platform. The time has come to leave. And I'm not leaving just yet, obviously, because it's terrifying and not enough people know. Not enough people are incentivized. Not enough creators have made things elsewhere, nor have enough people been willing to entertain the idea of following creators elsewhere. But there are platforms now where the rules just don't apply, where you can upload whatever you want, where you can rethink the whole structure of what you do, where you can build websites that you don't have to pay for hosting because people can just come there and it's peer-to-peer -peer and they get it right from you and then it's spread by itself. So how do we make this work? The answer is community. The answer is simply that people need to care. And it's not easy to make people care because people aren't going to care just for your sake. They're not going to care because it's easier for you. They're going to care because the content you make is something you couldn't have made here. It's something that you can't do on YouTube. You needed to leave and go somewhere that lets you do what you want. It needs to be that the quality and inspiration of your content is so much higher that it will have a more resonant effect on the core parts of your audience who will help support you. And in order to make that work, you're going to, have to be very clear about your needs. You're going to have to say, like, here's how much money I need to live my life. Here's how much support I need. Like, this is what it will take for me to be able to do this. Do you care enough? You know, and you have to prove that you can make good on the things that you're saying you're going to do. You have to, you know, put out the work that will impress people. And it's not easy to take the time away from, you know, continuing the grind of trying to appeal to social media to then go and work on this other thing until it's done and then wow the world. And even then, you know, the communities are largely still on social media. They're still looking for stuff that appeals to them personally. And it might be really difficult to find enough people who resonate with your perfect vision for them to pay for it. But... Just as ever before, the opportunity is way greater now than it ever has been throughout all of history. Imagine how fucking difficult it was to be an outsider artist before the internet. 
And now imagine how much more difficult it is to be one on YouTube than it would be if you were just doing whatever you want on sites to support it and like having the power to go look for your audience. It won't be easy. And the only way we're going to do it is, again, enough creators making stuff that's interesting enough on enough other platforms and enough audience members caring. But I think that there are tons and tons of people out there who are bored with the state of art right now on the internet, especially on YouTube, which is fucking garbage. I'm bored of it. Nothing good comes out anymore. Um, nothing new comes out for sure. Like, you know, it, all that's left is dinosaurs. There's no fresh blood spicing things up. So, you know, th the platform is already suffering. And I think that there are people who also are just looking for something to do looking for something to be a part of. And it can be more than just being a patron or talking to you on Discord. We can have more of an actual art community of people supporting each other to do what they want and to share those inner feelings and to have that connection that goes beyond just talking about stuff we like or even talking about our own content. You know, We should be sharing content with each other. People should be connecting because I make shit and you make shit and we like each other's shit and we want to perpetuate the cycle by which we can all make shit. But we both have to be honest with ourselves about what our needs are and honest with the audience about how we can fulfill those needs. And I think that a lot of us are young people in our 20s who don't even know what we need or want. I didn't know how much money I was going to need until I started living on my own. And now I have a much better sense of it and a much, much better sense of like, how much I, what, what should be my cost of living and what I want it to be and how I can obtain it. So, you know, realizing that will also help along the way. I'll put out more videos to help people with that somewhere when I figure out where I'm going. But think about this shit.